What's going on engineers? I'm back with another React video and in this one we're talking specifically about components, props, and state. Prior to this I did a getting started with React video. If you're new to React you should definitely watch that video first. I'll link it in the description because this video assumes that you at least know how to create a component. If you already know about React and you just want to learn more about components, props, and state then you can probably skip that video and just keep watching. So we got a lot to cover so let's just jump in. So the purpose of these examples is to show you how you can take larger components and break them down into a couple smaller child components which you can include in your parent component. And then once you've done that we can use this thing called props to push data down to child components. And what we're building today is a profile lister so we'll display a heading called like top profiles and then we'll display stuff from this.state.topprofiles and then we'll show a heading called other profiles and then display the other profiles under that. Then I'll just quickly show you what the HTML looks like here. I'm just using react-dom.render. I'm creating an element called profiles, and then I'm inserting it into the profiles div. And for mirror the video, we're not going to need to touch this. This can just stay as is for the entire time. If you're not sure what this does, definitely just pause here and check out that first video that's linked in the description. So we have some profile data here, like name, age, and bio, like EM, age 30, bio is engineer man, you got ducky is a duck, and then pizza is an actual pizza. Then we have some other profiles here, 1 through 5, and then bio is, is prof 1 through 5. Simple stuff. So now we're trying to build the UI, and all we're going to do for the UI is we're going to have an image, and then to the left of the image is going to be the name of the person, and then the age and the bio. That's it, real simple. So we'll start building that UI up. First thing we got to do is just do a header, so we'll do like, you know, top profiles. And then under the top profiles, we want to loop over everything in the top profile. So top profiles dot map profile. And then here we could start typing the HTML for the profile. So we'll put a new div to put the profile in. We'll insert the image. Next we'll drop the person's name in there with an H4. Create a new paragraph tag. And then inside there we'll drop the person's age and bio. So at this point we should be able to come over here to Brave, hit the refresh button, and we should get something. So our UI is good. It shows us our top profiles. Everything's good to go so far. So next thing we gotta do is show the other profiles. So we make a new header called H3, other profiles. And then we copy and paste all this code here? Well no, of course not, because we're good engineers and that's ridiculous. So how can we save ourselves from the ridiculousness of tons of duplicate code? Well, you'll probably be unsurprised to learn that the answer is child components. So to create a child component, and since we're doing profiles as the parent component, it would make sense that we would create a child component called profile, singular. So let's start by just duplicating this component from profiles to profile. So now I have an exact copy of profiles. All I really need to render here is just the one profile. So I'll copy just the profile portion of this, and then I will get rid of all this other HTML and just leave that. And because this profile has no state, which is to say that I don't need to actually modify anything about the profile after I render it, I can actually just remove this entire constructor entirely, just get rid of it. And I'll drop the S off of there, so now it's profile. So now I have a component called profile, and all it does is render the HTML that came from the profile's component. So the only thing I have to change now is this profile object doesn't exist. And this is kind of where props comes in. Because what we're going to do is we're going to pass the profile in as a prop to this component, and we can use it here. So what we'll need to change this to, instead of profile, it's going to be this.props.profile. And this will make more sense in a second. So we'll start by deleting this block. We don't need it just now. And then the way we're going to convert this to use the actual profile component is rather than supplying all this data, we're going to supply profile and that will create a new component in that place. Now here's where props comes in. If I want to pass something to this component, I can specify it using what looks like an HTML attribute. So I can do profile equals this, sorry, profile. So anything that supplies an attribute here goes into this.props of the component. So now when I come back to profile, I have access to this.props.profile, and that's why I can render now name, age, and bio. And I don't even need these, this parentheses anymore, I can actually just take this, and I can just paste it in place of here, and that will work just great. So real quick, I'll check in Brave just to make sure nothing's changed. I hit refresh and everything looks fine, so everything's working, it's rendering those child components correctly. So now we can finally render the other profiles, and now we just copy the one line, which is no big deal, and then replace top profiles, with other profiles. We can come back to our browser, hit the refresh button, and now we have a bunch of other profiles that show up. And everything seems to be working fine. Now you can create any any amount of nested components and you can just deem based on what you need in your project when you want to do that. 
and how granular you get is sort of a judgment call. Generally what I do is when I start duplicating HTML, I know it's time to make a component. I also know that if I am going to make a component and it'll end up getting used in 10 spots, then I know I should probably make a component versus putting that HTML in every component. So just for fun, we're going to create a new component called name, which will just be the contents of this h4 tag. So I'll create a new component called name.jsx. I'll drop that in there. This.props.profile.name. Except this one will be modified slightly. I won't do this.props.profile.name. I'll take out the profile. So it'll just be this.props.name. And that way when I come back to profile, I can replace this with name. Name equals this.props.profile.name. That way I can just use the prop called name and that's it. And again, we'll come back to Brave just to refresh, just to make sure everything's okay, and it is, it's working fine, name is still there. Now the last thing we're going to do is simplify this a couple times. Because this doesn't have any state and it only uses props, you can actually create what's called a stateless component. So what I can do now is I can take this return statement, and instead of using class, extend, react, component, and this and that, all I have to do is do function, name, throw props in there, and specify return. I then just have to just drop off this, and then now it's just props.name. I can come over to Brave, hit the refresh button, you can see that it still works fine. Now I have a really, really simple component. I can even make this even simpler, if you can even believe that. You can do something like const name equals props, and just do it this way. This would be using an anonymous function versus a normal function. So this is about the simplest possible React component you can make. But you can see that you come back here and you hit refresh, and it still works. It's fine. This is still a legitimate component. The last thing I want to talk about is state versus props. I get asked a lot, like, when should I use state and when should I use props? Of course, props have to be used to pass things down from parent components to child components. So here, you have to use props. Profile equals profile, and then profile, you have to get access to that via props. So in that case, props is essential, but there's a second part of it, and it's when I render HTML in a component, should I use props or state? And the answer is you can use props if the data cannot be changed by a component in that UI. Otherwise, you should use state. If you do know that something, for instance, in the profile component can say change the age, then a common pattern you would do is you have to reintroduce the, const the constructor, of course, and then what you would start out with is you would create the initial state and then you would apply the props to that state. So here you would set initial state, this dot state equals, and then you would do age, props.profile.age. Then down here, instead of doing this.props.profile.age, you would just do this.state.age. Now, if you expect to modify all of the profile data, rather than setting age is props.profile.age, you could just set the entire this.state.profile to be props.profile. Now you've effectively transferred the entire object into the state. And then from here, instead of using this.props, you do this.state. And nevertheless, you hit refresh, and everything works just as well. But the difference is, you can modify the state of this profile, and it will update the UI. Whereas props, you cannot, or you should not, change props. But for our use case here, the this.props method is probably the best. And we're done. That's it for React Components, State, and Props. Just one side note, this wasn't designed to be a tutorial on things like Gulp, or web servers or anything like that, but there's a file inside the directory called notes.txt. If you open it up, you can see commands you can run to actually get this running on your computer. Other than that, hopefully React components and how state and props relate to components is now more clear. As always, if you have any questions about anything in this video, place them down to the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. Take care.